Hello, my name is Tom Lodziak. In this video, we're going to look at how to block different types of topspin attack. We're going to look at how to block those very spinny, higher arc topspin attacks. And we're also going to look at how to block those low and very fast topspin attacks. We need to use a slightly different technique when we're blocking different types of topspin. And I'm gonna go into more detail about how you do that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to ask the question, how much should we block? Should we be trying to use lots of blocks when we play, or should we only be looking to block occasionally? I'll give you my thoughts. But before we get onto that, let's look at how we actually block these different types of topspin attacks. Let's start with these very spinny, higher arc topspin attacks. And what typically happens is, the player will try to block it back, but their bat angle will stay a bit too open and the ball will fly upwards. So if we look at this footage here where Martin is doing his spinny topspin attacks, and you can see that my bat angle as I'm trying to block this back is way too open and the ball just jumps up, flies off the end of the table. Now I turn my bat angle and I contact over the top of the ball and now I can control the spin. The ball stays lower over the net and lands on the table. So closing your bat angle is probably the most important thing. The timing is also important. We want to try and get that blocking as the ball is rising. We don't want to let it come up too much. The higher it comes up, the harder it is to get your bat over the top of the ball. So think about trying to get that block in as that ball's rising, maybe around net height, and that's gonna allow you to keep the ball lower. And finally, with these higher arc topspin attacks, we want to just be a little more active with the block. We don't need a big motion, just a short motion, but a definite active motion will allow you to keep the ball low and send it back with just a little bit more pace. Now, what about those lower and very fast topspin attacks? Well, with these, you don't have a great deal of time because the ball's coming at you very fast. So the way I think about this is, you know what? Just get your bat in the way. Get your bat in the way and just try and stop the ball, okay? You need soft hands, nice loose grip. You're gonna need quick reactions but we just wanna get our bat behind the ball and stop the ball. Because there's so much speed and spin, just by getting your bat in the way, just trying to stop the ball, it's gonna go back fast anyway, okay? I think the mistake some players make is just trying to hit the ball too much. And as that ball's moving really fast, it's a really difficult um, shot to pull off. Whereas if you just, Stop the ball, the ball will still go back pretty quick. You'll find it a little bit easier to do. In terms of your bat angle, when the attack comes in lower and faster, you don't need to turn your bat angle as much as those higher arc top spins, okay? We can just open up the bat angle a little bit more. The attack will be fast, but it's probably not going to be as spinny as the higher arc topspin one. So that's why we can just leave it a little more open. If you turn it too much, you're probably gonna put it into the net. So just leaving that open and that ball's just going to go back fast, stay low over the net, job done. So when blocking, always try and maintain 
a soft grip. Always try and take the ball as it's rising, but you're gonna to need to change your bat angle depending on how much spin your opponent is putting on his or her attack. Lots of spin at a higher arc, you're gonna to need to turn the bat angle much more. A lower, flatter top spin attack, then you're gonna to need to open your bat angle more. So how much should you block when you play? Now I've shown you lots of examples in this video where I have blocked well, won the point, it looks great, ah, oh, we should all be blocking. However, I've been very selective in the clips that I've shown you. I've got just as many clips, probably many more, where I have blocked one ball, but then my opponent has just hit the next attack straight past me and my blocking wasn't effective at all. So blocking can be useful to an extent. When I play, I, I block too much. I get into a bit of a blocking mindset and it works up to a level, but the stronger opponents, it's not good enough and they can keep hitting attacks past me. So, so for someone like me, I need to block less. I need to try and counter attack a little bit more. However, there are other players who never block at all and um, try to attack every single ball. So there may be situations for these players where actually a block would have been a better option and they might find that they have more success and win more points by just choosing the right ball to block and choosing the right ball to counter attack. So I think blocking is useful for all players. You just have to get that balance right. You don't want to start blocking too much, but there are some situations where using a block is gonna help you win a point. A good way of thinking about blocking is you're using a block to try and turn defense into attack. So for example, someone gives you um, a fast, low top spin attack, you don't have too much time to react or counter attack, you get the block in, the ball goes back very fast, your opponent is a bit taken by surprise and then plays a slightly weaker shot and that then gives you the opportunity to then start attacking. And I think then using a block can be really effective. You can turn a whole point around. You're on the back foot, you get a block in, your opponent is caught off balance, and then boom, you're into that attack and then trying to then dominate the point. Uh Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found those blocking tips useful and can try to implement them in your game. I will have more videos coming soon. Um, if you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.